Hey, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned on the website for more videos. All right, in this video, I'll be going over the arrange function on the Machine Studio hardware. And um, I know people really like the screen caps from the computer software, um, but for this, I'm not going to do that. And that's mostly because I think on the Studio hardware, you don't need the computer at all. These two huge screens and all the buttons really make sure them that you can stay on the hardware and away from the computer. Now that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'll first I'll give a rundown of the project I'm working on. I have three groups here. I have some um, electric piano on group A. On group B, I have some drums. In group C, I have a um, synth lead and a bass loaded up on here. And um, I have a few patterns for each of these, just some basic building blocks of arrangement. And I did a couple of videos on arrangement a few weeks ago. And those covered more of the theory of arrangement. This is more of a technical video on what buttons to press, what menus to go through. Um, so if you're looking for that, um, you're in the right place. But if you're looking for the um, sort of the theory behind it, I'd recommend checking those other videos out. So that said, I'm going to head and get started. I'm just going to enter into the Arrange menu up here. You can see between these two top buttons here, we can choose between Scene and Pattern. For now, we'll be working with Scene. I'll get into Pattern a little bit later. So for Scene, we have these 16 pads already dedicated to the, uh, to the scenes. You don't have to go into the Scene button here to select those, so that's nice enough. And um, now we can just go through and start entering on our pattern. So I'm going to start my group A, select my first pattern here, and you can see that the screens up there show the changes. So we have a new pattern loaded up into our first scene, and um, you can see I have it labeled up here. I did that in the computer beforehand just to get a good idea of what's going on. Um, for me, it's a lot easier to understand what's going on in the pattern when it actually says so, rather than just having like pattern one, pattern two, and so on. But anyways, I have this first pattern loaded up, and you can already start getting a feel of the interface in this range menu. So with these two knobs here, we can zoom in and out. You can see the left screen here sort of serves as a overall context of what's going on. The right screen here, um, you can move around and maybe explore in detail some different parts. So you can zoom in and out with this knob, and then if you're zoomed in enough, you can scroll between um, left and right with this other knob here. So that's nice, and you can also see that the bounding white rectangle here shows you what you're actually looking at in this other screen. So it's easy to easy to stay um, stay familiar with what you're working with here. So I got one pattern in. I'll go on to my drums, load up my intro drum pattern and my instruments. I will wait to bring in to later scene. So with that, um, I think I'm finished with my first scene. I'll move on to my next one just by pressing the second pad. Here we go. I'm going to go to my roads and load up. Let's see. Um, I'll stay with that first pattern drums stay with that first pattern as well but now I will bring in the bass um, so you can see I have a new scene loaded up here if we want to um, see that in full detail on the right screen you can either zoom out or we can just scroll over and then see what's going on For now I'll just zoom all the way out and I'll move on to another scene here so I'll go back to my electric piano load up the new pattern there load up my more developed drum pattern and then stay on the bass so here we go, get to zoom out again, make sure we're staying familiar with what's going on. And one more scene, um, if I wanna duplicate it, I can't do that, just using the duplicate button, I'll have to press the scene button here, hold that down, press, and then press again. And then um, I'll just change my instrument group to play the uh, play the pattern along with the bass and the lead in there. So we um, bring in that synth lead there, zoom out, and here we have a really basic rudimentary arrangement of this project. So now that we have this set out, you can play any individual scene just by pressing it. So if we want to play the intro one, or we can move on to the other ones. And a nice little feature is you can play multiple scenes in a row. So if I want to play one, two, three in a row, I can hold down my first scene then press the third scene here, and now when I hit restart, it will play the first scene, the second scene, and then the third scene right in order. And you can kind of see it up in this left screen here. It's highlighted. Um, a little hard to see, but um, it does show it, um, and it's nice to uh, have a little bit of visual feedback what's going on. And you can play the whole track, the whole project, just by holding the first and the last. Or another way to do that is pressing the scene button and then hitting all up here. And that will select all your scenes um, so you can just play it from the beginning to end. Um, it's nice if you want to export the audio um, in the machine menu on the computer. You have to make sure to select all those scenes before doing that. Um, so that's a nice, quick, and easy way to do that. 
So those are some overall tips for the scene menu on this arrange function on the Machine Studio hardware. With all that covered, we can now move on to the pattern function. So we'll go on to that next. Okay, so for this, I'll be working with my drums. So I'm just going to mute my other two groups. And along with that, I'll be working with my develop pattern just so I have a, a little bit more to work with. So with that all set, I'm just going to go up here and enter into the pattern arrangement. And once you do that, you can see the screens reflect some new changes here. We have all of our different sound slots and they show all the notes that apply to those different sounds. Like I talked about earlier, you can use these two knobs to navigate. You can zoom in and out, then you can scroll around with this one. Now you can do quite a few cool things in this menu. If you're not familiar with the events button, you can use that to select all the notes corresponding to a sound slot. So if I want to select all my kick drum notes, just go and hit the events button here, press my kick drum pad, and you can see all of my kick drums are highlighted. If you want to see that a little bit better, I can zoom in here, scroll through, and they're all highlighted here. So now you could clear those if you wanted, or you could quantize them. It's not going to work now since my whole pattern is quantized. If you want to just work with individual notes, you can go into the events menu, deselect that, pressing the pad again, and then use these arrows up here to scroll through your individual notes. So you can see here's my first kick, here's my second one, third one, and so on. And again, once you have those selected, you can delete, um, you can copy and paste, quantize, anything of that nature. So you have this um, very nice control over individual notes. And things get even more powerful once you enter into the events menu up here. So here you can see, um, we have these four different options here. We have position, length, pitch, and velocity. So you can control these for every single note. Again, you scroll through them by using the arrows up here and then the different pads. And once you have a note selected, you can change any of these options. So let's go through. For precision, you can obviously just move it along the timeline. For length, you can change how long the actual note is. And this might make sense for um, melodic instruments. For drums, uh, it's a little bit less applicable. But um, you can change the length, like I said. And um, if you have your step size locked in, um, let's see, let's go up here, step size. If you have this turned off, you're going to have these, um, these small increments when you change the length. But if you turn its step size back on to, say, 1 16th, that's, uh, that length feature is going to be quantized to the nearest 16th note. So um, that's a nice little trick there. You can also change the pitch of the note. So I'll do that now. Um, and as well, you can change the velocity and this um, automation lane over here shows you what you're working with, a little bit of a graphical display there. So a um, very nice, very nice interface for changing all these different properties of the notes. One nice feature I discovered um, when I record, I usually do things live. So my velocities sometimes are all over the place. Say this kick drum here, they're not too bad, but I want to uh, maybe change all those to the same velocity. So rather than going through every single note and then selecting the velocity to the same level, I'm going to go into my events menu here, select all my kick drums like I did before. You can see they're all highlighted. I'm going to work my velocity all the way up to the top. And you can see it changes from multi to 127. So that's the maximum velocity. From there, you can move it to any velocity you want and they will all be the same. So maybe I'll move it around 100 or something like that. And now these are all the same velocity, which might sound nice for your application, but also might sound a little bit computerized. So we can go through and go back to my individual note selections. It's going to press the arrow while turning this knob, and that'll give a nice little velocity variation in there. And just like that, you can see they're in the same ballpark, but um, they're not exactly all the same. So you have sort of like a human feel to that sort of automated procedure. So a nice little feature there. And you can also do the same for length. Let's select all of our kicks, put my length the shortest it can go, 240, and now I can change the lengths so they're all the same. So that, I think that concludes this video on the arrange function on the Machine Studio hardware. Um, that's a very powerful feature. I think it's one of the main things that sets the, uh, the studio apart from the other models of machine, as well as other drum pad controllers. So I highly recommend I'm checking out and getting familiar with its functions. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And any feedback on the videos or um, new tutorial ideas is always appreciated. So again, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, check out our website, and I will see you on the next video.